Okay, let's take a look at a really big frame, right? Framing the entire society. Well, here are two possibilities. We can say society is a family or society is a competitive game. And again, the, depending on how you sort of look at the family or look at the society, it's family or competitive game, um, different sorts of policies uh, might fall out of that framing choice. So let's explore this a little bit. Let's take a look at, at a family and see uh, uh, what's going on in a family. Well, here are some parents here, and they have three children here, right? And we can ask a, an important question that all sort of parents uh, have to face, and that is how do you distribute the resources of the family among your children, right? Now, what kind of resources are we talking about? Well, investments, right? Are you, you know, uh, investments in their skills, so educational opportunities. Are you going to pay for the extra uh, tutoring session or the SAT prep classes, right? Are you going to pay for the, the summer camp? Are you going to uh, pay for uh, all those types of things? Are you going to invest time in reading the extra story at bedtime and so on, right? So, so parents here uh, have decisions to make about how much they're going to invest in the development of the skills and knowledge of their children, right? But the problem is, of course, there are finite resources, right, for many parents, and so they might have to make some tough decisions. Let's imagine they've got three kids, but they differ in some of their characteristics. Say this kid here uh, is talented, right? So for any given amount of investment in this child, you'll get high productivity, right? For a little bit of SAT preparation, it does a lot, right? In contrast, this child over here is a hard worker, but maybe not as talented, right? So for that same given uh, amount of investment, not as much productivity for the output. Now notice, these are, these are economics terms here, right? And so right away, we can see here that, that parents are facing a decision and they might, be they might end up choosing to behave very differently from how the free market system is supposed to work. Markets allocate resources efficiently. That's one of their, their uh, virtues. That's one of the things they do well, is they allocate resources efficiently in the economy. And so from a market perspective, if this child I has the, the, the greater talent, then you can get higher productivity out of that child with per, per unit of investment, right? So market principles might recommend that you invest more in the high productivity child than in the lower productivity child, right? Now from the parent's point of view, who presumably love their children the same amount, right? This could be a problem. And especially if the siblings uh, get wind of this, then you have the classic sibling rivalry, right? The two here are going to be arguing about uh, the parental investment. So what the markets might recommend um, might be different from what parents are actually going to do, although it is an empirical question. We can ask the question, are parents investing equally in their children? And are the differences in their the, the traits, the attributes of the children, uh, is that uh, influencing parental investment decisions? But let's continue on. So imagine this third child is maybe stricken with an illness of some kind. So low productivity. Um, yet the parents, because of their love for the child, right, might invest a lot in this ch child, just maybe even keeping them alive, right, or giving them some uh, decent quality of life. Again, from a market point of view, that's not the most efficient allocation of resources. But parents are often uh, behaving in ways that are very different from what the, the markets might recommend. So now let's, let's take this example and now just expand it out to the entire society. And we'll use the metaphor that governments are parents, right? And so governments have to make decisions about the allocation of resources, right? Whom in society are you going to invest in? Right? Here's our, our society with inequalities in income or social status or power, however you want to imagine this. This is one of the questions in a social species, how to distribute the benefits and burdens of social life, right? Um, and governments are instituted by humans, right, in self-governing societies to make those decisions. Whom are we going to invest in and how much, right? And, and what kind of investments are we going to be making in the different uh, groups in society? Well, from this point of view, then, we can, we can think of different types of governments or different types of 
government market interactions as different kinds of parents. And so here are three familiar ones. We can think of them as three styles of parenting. Capitalism, socialism, and communism, right? They're all going to be making decisions, in a sense, about how to make investments in the society, much as parents would make decisions in investing in their children. Um, now, we'll take a look. at There's a lot to be said about, of course, these three systems, uh, but we're just going to look through the lens uh, of inequality, so the, the view towards inequality. Now, in the capitalist system, there is a, a tolerance for inequality. In fact, it, it is often endorsed as an incentive. So we've already learned about this, that right here is this, this person down here in the socioeconomic status. Well, they kind of see that these folks over here have a bit more, and that, in, that motivates them. That gives them an incentive to work harder and develop their skills and, 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 and take advantage of opportunities and work their way up, right? And at each level, right, the incentive is there to, to do better in the system. Uh, and the outcome, then, is good for everybody. So say the defenders of capitalism, right? So inequality is needed as an incentive, and it actually benefits the entire society. It incentivizes people to be productive. Right? Now, the socialism system, the, the socialist, uh, will depart from the capitalist um, in the following way. While they might allow earned inequalities, you know, inequalities as a result of effort, right? The socialist tends to want to eliminate unearned inequalities, inequalities that are caused by family birth position or genetics or luck. So, for example, um, the socialist may tolerate inequality to the extent that the differences in income or status or power uh, are the result of actual effort, right, hard work. But suppose, you know, you're born into this family here, and that family with a lot of resources and income, um, that gives you a leg up, right? You, you are getting all kinds of resources that the, the, the children down here are not getting. So, so just position of birth in this spectrum here, uh, the, the, for the socialist, that's a problem. Uh, because for the socialist, there's a recognition that your, your birth position in the status hierarchy uh, may be influencing your ultimate levels of achievement. Um, or uh, take genetics. You know, suppose uh, this individual right here, they're born with uh, maybe a little less uh, ability to learn, or maybe they have a genetic uh, disease that requires uh, resources or it reduces their ability to, to get schooling or something, right? Now, th that's something out of their control, right? They, did, they didn't choose that, but it's going to, in a sense, penalize them in this uh, competition for social status, power, income, and so on, right? And, and likewise, on the other side of the coin, you know, the individuals who are, are born with just genius and, and uh, high levels of motivation and ambition due to personality factors that are outside their control, well, th then again, they're going to be benefiting in a competitive system like this, but it was due to a factor outside their control. So for the socialist, uh, they're, they're worried about inequalities that are rooted in family position, genetics, and then luck is always a factor, right? There's all kinds of, of um, situations where uh, some people uh, are able to take advantage of some lucky change in the economy or something that others didn't have the opportunity to take advantage of. So the, the socialist government then is going to be making different types of investments in uh, the society. The capitalist will will uh, uh, tolerate inequalities here. The socialist will want to smooth out some of the inequalities because some of those inequalities are the result of unearned factors, right? Factors outside the control. And they might do this by taxing those with more income and redistributing down here. So in other words, making a a resource distribution choice here to invest more down here um, uh, at the expense of uh, those up here. And of course, we've already seen some of the reactions uh, uh, politically to that type of thing, right? So conservatives are going to say this is not good for society. You tax the productive people. That's going to harm the overall society. And the liberals will tend to say there's a fairness issue. And in fact, it makes sense to invest in folks down here. Uh, you want to make them good consumers, and that'll drive the economy, etc. Uh, what about communism? Now, again, from the point of view of inequality, that's 
um, something, uh, the, the radical example here, where the idea would be to eliminate inequality. So for the communist, there's, there's no tolerance at all for the inequality, right? From each uh, according to their talents, to each according to their needs, I think was something, something like what Marx said. Um, so we can think of governments, that as, uh, governments as different types of parents, right? For the capitalist parents, the idea is pretty much uh, let everybody kind of make use of their uh, their natural endowments and their uh, their ambitions and motivations, and see where they uh, see where they fall in this great competition that is society. For the socialist, the idea here is is that some of these inequalities are not earned, so therefore uh, the government should be making different uh, allocation of resources drawing upon drawing resources from some groups in society and investing in other groups in society much as as parents might uh, take some resources that that could be uh, productive if given to this child and maybe delivering them to this child right uh, so so in the same way that parents are making uh, choices different from what the free market system might recommend so the the socialist government parent you might say uh, is making investments in a way different um, from uh, what the free market system might recommend. C but of course the socialist is going to say there are good reasons, justifications for doing so. And they might even uh, say not only is it fair to do so, but that it might benefit the system overall. So they too can make system justifying arguments. So this then is a way, um, th this was our original example was framing, framing society. Is it a family? Is it a competitive game? And depending on how you frame that, you might be making different types of investments in different children or different segments of society. And so we can think of, of these different uh, systems as metaphorically different styles of parenting. Uh, and they are related to how you might frame society. Of course, as you go down the list here, you're looking at, at society more like a family. As you go up towards the capitalism, you're seeing uh, the society more like a competitive game. <laughs>